dear student today we are going to discuss the insertion sort uh, insertion sort is the one of the this insertion sort is the one of the first sorting techniques that we are going to study before studying insertion sort uh, let's take a look at the process of the sort uh, suppose there is a sequence of number a b a b a n and we want to sort this data then in the process of the sorting we arrange the data in such a way that a1 dash is less than a2 a2 dash is less than a3 and, and so on a n minus 1 is less than a n dash since they are, they are, they are with the sequence of n numbers a1 a2 a n there are n factorial possibilities of arranging these numbers because for n positions there are n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 and so on up to 1 there are n factorial options but we are interested only in one options in which the number a1 a2 a3 up to a n are arranged in such a way that a1 a2 is less than a2 a2 is less than a3 and so on a n minus 1 is less than a n so the, the random sequence where here the substrate represents the magnitude of the variable digits now the structures in, in which the data are arranged usually the number to be sorted are part of collection of data or for data each record contains a key which is the value to be sorted. Like this in the example, the, there is every data contains a key value on basis of which we arrange the, or order the data. This key is very essential because on the basis of this key, we insert the order between the different data. Note that when the key must be rearranged, the data associated with the key must also be rearranged. So, when we arrange the data, the data is actually arranged as per the order of the keys. And pointer, uh, in some of the uh, ordering techniques, pointer are used as the key. The location of the data is used to arrange the order of the data. So, we sort the data on the basis of some key value and these key values are arranged in a sequence. And the question arises in our mind that what is the need of studying the sorting algorithms? There are various situations in which we, can, we need the, the use of sorting algorithms. We require the use of sorting algorithms. Like when And different sorting techniques are required for different situations. Because the sorting situation, do we have randomly ordered key? Are all the keys distinct? How large is the set of key to be sorted, ordered, and need guaranteed performance? The performance is the main criteria. The these sorting algorithms works differently in different situations. So, depending upon the situations and the size of the data and distinctness of the data, we use different variety of sorting algorithms. Various algorithms are better suited to form of these situations. So, we shall study various types of algorithm and besides this, we shall also study the situation in which their performance is best, the, perform the situation in which the performance is the worst and in average case their performance. On basis of this, we shall compare these algorithms, analyze the algorithms and implement these algorithms. Before starting sorting, we should go through these terms that are used in the sorting. The first one, internal sort. The internal sort in which the data to be sorted is all stored 
in the computer screen. In this, the whole size of data. In generally normal situations, when we sort our data, is generally of limited size. And we store all these data in our system and sort these data. But when the size of the data becomes so huge and we cannot store all of the data at once in the system, then we take a byte of it and some of the data is stored at the uh, remote location on some external devices. In that situation, this we use the external sort. The external sort, some of the data to be sorted, it might be stored in some external slower devices. And when we need that data, we take a copy of that data and bring it to our system and then apply our algorithm and, and we, then we sort this data. So the data is sorted in a partial in small portions. This kind of sorting is called the external sort. And the, when the, the whole data is stored on the system and this data is sorted, that is called the internal sort. Next one is the in place sort. The amount of extra space required to sort the data is constant with the input size. So, there are some signs for sorting. We need to store some extra space. We need to have some extra space to store the temporary data that is uh, or data that is being processed and this extra space required to sort the data is constant with the input size. That's called the input sort. So these are the terms internal sort, external sort and input sort. Stability. Uh, a stability. A stable sort preserves relative order of record with equal ones. In stable sort, the for example, the, in the year first table, the we are sorting on the basis of the first heap, that is the name of the client, and the name of the client are arranged in alphabetical order. Here Aaron Andrews starts with A, Battles with B, C, Chen, and like this. Here we have taken the name as the key value and on the basis of which we have arranged our data. While in the second list, we have taken second value as the key. That is the, the and those are integer values and we have arranged these in, order, uh, in increasing order, like 1, 1, Fox and policy have uh, the integer value one, key value one, ten, two, three, and four. So here, uh, records with key value three are not in order on first key. Suppose there are multiple keys in the table, then for the key value three, there are different data, but they are not arranged in terms of first means that is alphabetical order between the names. So it is sorted on the basis of second key value but yet not it is still yet not sorted on the basis of the first key that is the alphabetical order. A stable sort preserve the relative order that records with equal keys. Uh, in relative stable sort the relative order is also maintained with equal keys. For example, this is kind of sorting is not called will not be called a stable because for the key key value three, the data is not arranged on the basis of key value one. So these are not preserving the relative order of the records with key value one. So this is not the stable sort. But in case of the stable sort, the order would be they would be ordered in the alphabetical way or way on the basis of first key. Here in this now we start the algorithm insertion sort. In insertion sort is uh, this 
sorting te uh, technique uh, was invented with the game of playing cards its uh, its idea came from the sorting in uh, the playing cards in this we start with an empty left hand and cards facing down on the table and we remove one card at a time from the table and insert it into the correct position in the left hand and compare it with each of each of the cards already in the hand from right to left the cards held in the left hand are sorted these cards were originally the top cards of the pile on the table i we play the game of playing cards then we pick a card from the uh, pile uh, from the deck of the cards and we compare this card with the already sorted card in our left hand and we start comparing from the right hand side and we find out the exact position of the newly ins newly inserted inserted card card and then we place the card in the increasing order so here what we did we took a initially in our left hand we had card which were already are sorted and we took a new card and we compared it from the right hand side and find out the its exact position in already sorted uh, cards and then inserted it to it for inserting it we first we make a place for the newly inserted card for this we shift a card which are greater than this to a one position right and then we make an empty space and then we insert that card i am repeating it once again what we do, do we compare we first we i i sort the our card in the our left hand then we compare we start comparing it from the right hand side all the cards which are greater than the newly new card are shifted to the right towards the right by one position and a new empty space is created then in this empty space we insert the newly added card so this is the simple procedure that we follow when we play the game of cards the same technique is used in the insertion so we take uh, i am giving you an example of the same playing cards uh, game here the third pictorial diagram here we want to insert a card with value 12 into already uh, sorted card list 6 10 24 36 here here we shall find out start we start we would start comparing from the right hand side we compare 36 with 12 36 is greater than 12 then we will shift 36 to the one position right we shall compare 24 with the 12 the 24 is also greater than 12 so it would also be shifted to a one position uh, it would also shift to one position right to its previous position with with its previous position and then we shall compare 10 10 is smaller than 12 so the process of shifting will stop in this situation only two cards will be shifted that are 36 and 24 and 36 and 24 will shift to the right by one position and an empty space is created because of that shifting between 10 and 24 now at that empty space we shall place our newly inserted card that is red so the process is like that first 36 will shift to the right then 24 will shift to the right and then the newly inserted card would be placed at the position number 3 this is the simple example of the playing cards that we play very easily this is the same procedure is followed when we do the insertion card sorry then 
now we shall check the algorithm and the step programming step that required to perform all these operations. So let's place, uh, uh, let's take an unsorted array with element 5, 2, 4, 6, 1, 3. This is an unsorted array because the number are not in order. At each iteration, the array is divided into the two subarrays. Each of this unsorted array, when every time and on each iteration, this unsorted array would be divided into the two subarrays. The, the partition will divide the array into the two subarrays. The one will call the left subarray and the other side will call the right subarray. The left subarray would be the sorted and the right subarray would be unsorted. How we start with this? For, we shall start with the single element. As we all know, at the single element is already sorted. We need not to perform any kind of sorting or compare. So we start with the two elements. Here 5 and 2 will be taken and 2 is smaller than 5 but it is on the right hand side of the 5 and 5 is greater than 2 and it is on the left hand side so we shall perform swapping. 5 would be shift. 5 would shift to the right hand side and 2 will shift on the left hand side. And in this way in the starting position 2 and 5 are ordered but rest of the element on the right in the right subarray 4, 6, 1, 3 are still not sorted. Yet not sorted. Now take the pictorial view of this situation. First, 2 will be compared. First, we start with the single element 5. It's already sorted. No comparison. Now, the first element of the right up array, that is 2 will be uh, 2 is compared with 5, 5 is greater than 2, so it shifts to the right side by one position and in the empty space 2 is inside. Next, the element in the right subarray is 4. 4 is compared with the 5, 5 is greater than 4, so 5 shifts to the one right position right, right position, shifted to the right position by, uh, shifted to the right and in empty space 4 is inside. In next iteration 6, 6 is compared with 5. Here 5 is all less than 6 so it, uh, no shifting occurs and 6 is inserted at the right hand side of the list. Now 1, 1 is compared with the 6, 6 is greater than 1 so 6 is shifted to the right by 1 position. Next element is 5. 5 is greater than 1, so 5 is shifted to the right by 1 position. Next element is 4, 4 is greater than 1, so 4 is shifted to the right by 1 position. And next element is 2, 2 is greater than 1, so it is shifted to the right by 1 position. And an empty space is created, and at that empty space, the 1 is inserted. And at last, 3. 3 is compared with the 6, 6 is greater than 3, so, so 6 is shifted to the right by 1 position. Next, five, uh, next element is 5, if 5 is also greater than 3, so 5 is shifted to the right by 1 position. Then next element is 4, 4 is also greater than 3, so shifted to the right by 1 position. And empty space is created between 2 and 4. And in that empty space, we insert our, the, our new number 3. So in this way, the insertion sort, sort the this unsorted list of elements and we get a sorted list. So this is the simple diagrammatical process, diagrammatic representation of the insertion sort. So we all are well aware of the sorting technique or that is used in the insertion So, so I, uh, simply in this process we compare on the left hand side there is a sorted array on the right hand side there is a sorted array and we compare the element newly, uh, 
sorted list compared with the element the larger size element shifted to the right by one position and by this shifting the empty space created is created and that empty state is filled by the new being setter so now we shall understand the process with, um, with help of our array representation and program here Uh, we then uh, our variable j is initialized. J is equals to two, and when j is compared with the element on the left hand side. Here j is equals to two is compared. Then for so j equal to three, j is equal to four, j equal to four or five, and j equals to six. In this way, we come uh, j is shifted from the position number two to the length of the array, and At each, for each key value, an iterative process is run through the array. The insertion sort uh, algorithms is as follows. First, take a look of this insertion sort, and then I shall start. The process of insertion sort. The we take a variable j. That's when you start from p and up to the length of the array that we are sorting. That is the length of the array from the value two because we are we are not starting with the first element because first element single element is already sorted. So we need to perform sorting only for start only from the element which is position number two to the length of the array. And we shall make each element and key value from the second to the length of the array. So, for element j from two to n, we shall make the key value. Uh, we shall make the key value one by one. After when we decide the value of key, then we start a variable i. That's value initialized from j minus one means to the left root of the Key value. Then, then there is an i is greater than zero and a i is greater than two. Means there is an element which is on the left hand side of the key value and is greater than the key value. Then, what we do? We we make a i. We shift the values at uh, left hand side, which is greater than the key, to we shift that value to the right hand side. For shifting it to the right, we increase its index from i to i plus one. Now we compare with the next element, uh, means next left, next element on the left. So for that, we decrease the value of i to is equal to i minus one. Here, check out carefully that in the previous step. The value at the element at the a i plus a i has shifted to the a i plus one, not the index. But in the second step, we are decreasing the index value i to i minus one. This there is a difference in these two, because in the step one we have shifted the element at the position number i to the i plus one, and we have shifted the index i my i minus one to i. In this way, now we put the key value at the position number i plus one. Means the at that empty space created by shifting the element to the right hand side is filled by the key values. So, what so as I told you, this is an iterative step. In pictorial diagram, you just keep on comparing the element and shifting the element, and at the final empty space, you place the element. But in program, you do it in step a stepwise way, 
first shift one position to the right hand side in that empty space put the key value then compare it with the element on the left hand side if it is greater than the key value shift it to the right and place the key value in the that empty space so this is the simple procedure of insertion sort the loop value the point that i am telling you that the shifting take step wise suppose in this situation when j equals to 5 and j 5 the key value is equals to 1 so 1 is compared with the 6 6 is greater than 1 so 6 is shifted to the position number uh, so uh, a i shifted to a plus 1 so if i is equal to j minus 1 means 5 minus 1 is equals to 4 so uh, a4 is shifted to the a i plus 1 that means the value at a4 is will shift to the position number a plus 4 plus 1 to a5 so value at a4 will shift to the position number 5 so 6 will shift to the position number 5 now the index i that was 4 4 so i 4 minus 1 3 so i value would be equal equal to 3 so now the if a i a value at a i means 3 a 3 equals to 5 is 5 is greater than 1 then again what will we do we will shift a i at a i plus 1 means a 3 value at the a 3 plus 1 means a 4 5 will shift to the position number 4 So now the value will i will decrease to the i minus one, so it will become equals to three minus one two. Now the a value a i a two will compare with the one. The a two the value is four, so the four is greater than one, so a a two will shift to the a three. So value four will shift to the position of five, and the i value will be equals to two minus one equals to one. The value at a one would be shift to the a i plus one means a two, and now if an i value would be equals to one minus one, i would equals to become equals to zero. So the while condition so that i should be greater than zero has will not be satisfied, and it will go out of the loop. And in that situation, a i plus one means i value is equal to zero plus one. At a one, we shall place the key value. The key value was here uh, a j a five. So a five means one. One will be shifted at the position number one. So after the end of the loop, one will shift to the first position, and all the elements will shift to the right hand side. So this is the process of the insertion sort algorithm. Now the loop variant. So if Let's take a look. I am giving you one one minute okay, to take a look and understand all these things. Then I shall move to the next slide. Proving loop invariant. Proving loop invariant work like induction. Like in induction, there are three steps: initialization, this case inductive case, and termination case. Here, there are also three steps: initialization, maintenance, and termination. In initialization, it is true prior to the first iteration of the loop. The record here for the single element is already sorted. So in the first step is already true. It's already sorted. So in initialization, the first element we do not start with the first element. It's already sorted. We start with the second element as the key value. The maintenance. It is true before an iteration of the loop. It remains true before the next. If it is true before an iteration of the loop, it remains true before the next iterations. If the um, If one step is already sorted, then it will be already sorted. Then in the next step, it will also be the sorted one. 
suppose 2 is greater, uh, 3 is greater than 2 then this condition will be satisfied even if the max any element come in to the new uh, in this list this condition will remain true so this is called the inductive state so if we have already sorted data the order in the sort elements in the sorted list would remain the same it would not be like that k2 4 is greater than 2 then 4 will always come to the right hand side of the 2 it when whatever element comes to the list it, it will not happen like this the 4 will come to the left hand side of the 2 so it is, if it is true before any iteration of the loop it remains true before the next iteration the termination when the loop terminates the invariance gives us a useful property that helps show that the algorithm is correct when the loop terminates, in this situation when i is becomes equal to 0 and it failed, the invariant gives us the useful property that helps the and is satisfied and algorithm automatically stop. It stop the induction when the loop terminates. So in this step, the terminating condition was a i is greater than a i should be greater than 0. So when y equals to 0, then this algorithm automatically stops. So the here is termination. So here are three steps in the initialization, maintenance, and termination. And the loop invariant of the insertion step. Initialization, as I have told you, we start with the second element because the first element is already sorted and we need not to do any so perform any sorting or iteration on the first step. We can skip it and we simply start with J is equal to 2 to length of the array n. So A1 is already sorted, so initialized the loop invariant for the insertion zone. The while inner loops moves from aj minus 1, aj minus 2, aj minus 3, and so on by the one position to the right until the proper position for the key which has the value started out in aj is found. As we know that we start comparing the value, key values with the element on the left hand side one by one we move to f element in the left one if any element greater than the key value is found in the left hand side then shift the large size value to the right hand side, one position right one position right side by one position and we keep on shifting the large size value by one position and the empty space create the, until this condition satisfies we move to the left hand side until i is greater than zero or i is become equals to zero at that situation the loop terminates in termination step when i become equals to zero then we automatically go out of the loop and we replace the that position with the key value that will be the final position value position of the key value the sub array a is equal to one to consist of element of the array in sorted list so after the sorting in the previous example that we took the i has taken its correct position at position number one because it is the smaller than all the element two four five six and three so thus the entire array is sorted so in variant at the start of the form loop of the elements in a i to j minus 1 are in sorted. So uh, now we are going moving towards the analysis of the insertion sort. So the insertion sort analysis, uh, we are well aware of the steps. Now we shall analyze the sort insertion sort. Here in we are well aware of the insertion sorts steps here for an array when we move from 2 to n there are n elements and the time consumed to travel is equals to n and civil is the cost next step is key one by one each element becomes the key element so that equals to n minus 1 because we at the Say we start when we come we are not comparing the first element, so, so iteration will run for the n minus one element. The this is the statement of this, this is the process of inserting and it will also take n minus one time. The i equals to j minus one. 
in this step the value of i is is decremented by sorry i is initialized by decrementing the value of j by 1 so for there are j combinations of uh, n minus 1 combination of j so there will be n minus 1 times which we need to perform this operation and while i is greater than 0 and a is greater than b this situations is that we need to we to uh, we need to check this position for every element uh, this is a variable step so for all the element from j is equal to 2 to 1 we need to check this so this is the summation of j is equal to 2 to 1 how many times this condition is satisfied again in the second step ai plus ai shifted to the right depends upon the same situation so j is equal to 2 to n minus 1 so it will be tj minus 1 because at last one element would be we will left the one element in that compared situation for present cannot be performed with the single element so it is less than uh, tj minus 1 tj equals to tj minus 1 the next step are all related so their complexity are the same and the final step is the exit condition and at that position we simply place the element so for n minus n element we will find the n minus 1 position and the we need n minus 1 We take n minus one times to perform the operation. So these are the costs we have put uh, given a constant value to the cost and uh, and number of iteration or times it's like for each steps. So the finally the total time complexity becomes equals to c one n plus c two n minus one plus c four n minus one plus c five sigma j is equal to two to n t j. C six sigma j two two t j minus one t j minus one because uh, we need pairs to compare. So at last we will be left with the uh, it will be less than one. We need not sigma we need not any comparison. So fine. So the array is already sorted. Mm. This is the time complexity, and this is the overall analysis. Now we should consider the cases. The first is the best case. The, then the array is already sorted. Then in that situation, this step, while i is greater than uh, a i is greater than k, means that there will be no element in the left hand side which will be the greater than the k value. So this step would be uh, equals to no condition will be satisfied in that situation. Uh, in that situation. Uh, uh, In that situation, you we will simply eliminate those sub, uh, steps, and in that situations, we will write the, uh, equal to zero, and uh, we are we will have been left with the simply C one, C two, C four, and C C four, and C five would be equals to n minus one. We shall just compare element n minus n minus one times, and all will be replaced by the n minus one. So these terms, the C one n. C one n plus C two n minus one plus C four n minus one plus C five equals to uh, a n plus b. Five. So the in average uh, best case, the complexity of the insertion for sort would be equal to theta n or of the order of n. Uh, now the again take a look of the this insertion sort. In this sorting technique, we, these are the set that we have already discussed, and uh, in such a sort. Here, uh, in the in such a sort, in average case, uh, when there are order list is not it's already sorted, we need n into n minus one by two comparisons. Means roughly we can say that n into n minus one equals to n square by Two comparison is the step sigma j equal to two to n p j, and then likewise in the next step while condition we need n into n minus one by two means n square by two comparison in this step also. So total n square by two comparison. So in general case it need n square by two or simply n square comparisons or complexity 
but in best case it has that complexity of the theta n. So if the good running type of the Hessian-Schuler to solve is equal to theta n, and in the worst case, it's an uh, average case, its complexity is equal to one square. So then already we already sorted insertion sort is a very efficient uh, technique, but in average when array is not sorted, then this performs very poorly and its order is theta n square. Thank you.